Greetings from Finland. Uh, my name is Joel Oikkanen and uh, I'm a CRM consultant. Uh, I've been working with almost all of our cloud for customer uh, projects in different roles, solution architect or a functional consultant and so forth. And uh, my colleagues here, we have Rikard Kallis or Riku and then we have Petri Niemelä. And uh, oh. both, of, both of these guys, they have tons of experience with the, with the Cloud for Customer solution and uh, also in this context on, on customer service as well. Uh, so some three words. Uh, I guess, Marius, my, my Polish is not that great yet, uh, but uh, I assume that Marius went through the agenda or Radek. And uh, I will do a few three words before we actually dive into the demo. Uh, so the demo is uh, heavily on the focus of uh, this virtual session. But uh, to kind of uh, get our mindsets around the customer service as such, uh, I have a few phrases here. Uh, so if we think about customer service or digital customer service, uh, what does that mean to us? And I, I think it's uh, given today that uh, people, they buy products and services from companies, but why do they stop buying is uh, one major reason is due to the bad service that they might receive. And uh, also this bad service or if it's a high effort for the customer to get uh, service from a company, it, it is a fact of life that it tends to drive disloyalty, meaning that the customers are more likely to, to swap to another, another provider. And uh, then how do, we, how do we mitigate this? How do, we, how do we actually make sure that our customer service and your customer service is, uh, is not uh, driving disloyalty is that we need to make it simple to the customer. So it needs to be a low effort uh, service and uh, we will come soon to the underlying technical solutions but it's, it's about you and us thinking what channels do we want to support and uh, how does our customer journeys look like, what way do we want to drive the customer, how do we better understand the customer, what are we actually measuring and uh, analyzing from the different customer touch points. And uh, some thoughts on a, on a general level about the customer service. So it's not only about technical solutions. Of course, that plays a big role. But uh, most of all, customer service is an attitude. So it needs to be in the heads and minds of every single people in the organization, uh, starting from top management, of course. And uh, then when, uh, when you're thinking about customer service, uh, especially nowadays with uh, modern digital channels and so forth, we need to think, think about the big picture. And by big picture, I mean that uh, not only how does the customer service processes flow and what channels do we support, but what is the role of uh, sales, for example? How do they have the visibility to the different customer journeys and customer interactions? And it can be as simple as uh, a sales rep is going to meet with a customer. He might want to see uh, like a full 360 picture of the customer, what kind of reclamations that specific customer might have done, you know, the previous day. And, and also it relates to marketing, marketing automation. How do we utilize, how, how do we turn the customer interactions into a, more into a buying process or revenue generating model. And uh, of course, we need to think about the customer journeys, what different touch points, what do we need to support, what are our business requirements and the requirements of our customers. And then uh, future proof. So when we are planning on customer service solutions, we need to take into account that uh, there are new channels rising, whether we like it or no. Uh, 
for example, if, if you look at uh, somewhere in the States, uh, Twitter as a channel is picking up or has picked up a lot. So it's not only the traditional channels, but new channels. How do we support those? And whatever channels might rise uh, going forward, we need to be ready to support those. And then finally, what do we want to measure? So all the data and, and analytics, how, how do we measure, what do we want to measure, and what do we do with that data that we get out of the customer interactions? That's something that needs to be kept in mind when, when moving forward with a customer service project. And then quickly swapping to the customer service funnel, kind of starting to go more towards the technical solutions here. And, uh, Obviously, you will see the demo soon, uh, but what kind of uh, channels and touch points do we have? And, uh, of course, at the same time, thinking like, where do we want to drive our customers? Obvious answer is we want to push customers more towards the self-service. So we have uh, things like the Internet, your websites. Uh, what do you provide on those? Is it only chat or could there be something more? different kind of communities, uh, knowledge bases. There might be, you might have an e-commerce web shop where you want to provide customer service. Um, again, might not only be the chat, but might be a scenario where customer service agent takes over the customer e-commerce session and, and helps find the products and fill the baskets and so forth. And then more on the, let's say, non-real-time communication, we have the traditional email, which is a fairly non-effective channel. Uh, anyways, it's still heavily used, uh, but uh, many companies want to kind of stray away from the email channel. But then we have the social media, we have different kind of portals and web forms and uh, SMSs, and then on the real-time communication, we obviously have things like uh, contact centers, so telephone calls, chat, uh, might be video calls, and, and even face-to-face. -face. And uh, this is kind of the funnel that should be also kept in the back of our heads when, when going forward with customer service things. And uh, transitioning smoothly to the more like the solution landscape. So I'm not trying to scare you with this picture, but uh, just painting a kind of a high-level picture that when we talk about the SAP ecosystem, uh, there are all kinds of interrelated systems. And of course, not everybody needs to have these systems. It depends on your scenarios and, and needs and uh, what kind of uh, customer service do you actually provide. But uh, there's the hybrid cloud for customer. It's now in the center of the picture as... Uh, you will soon see a demo on this solution. Uh, then there is a Hybris Engagement Center, which is a new product from SAP, and uh, it's already available uh, globally, but uh, I think in Europe it will be available uh, during the next quarters. So we'll, we'll have one slider for you on, on that as well. And then we have the commerce, the marketing solutions, we have the SAP contact center as the telephony solution. Uh, we might have ERP uh, creating documents and pulling data. Many times customer might want to, you know, know, for example, what is the delivery time or stock situation. So, so you need to have all that data available for the service, service agents. And obviously the data warehouse let it be SAP, SAP BW, and HANA, uh, knowledge bases. Uh, then, then, of course, there's the self-service part, your websites, uh, social media, all kinds of communities, and so forth. So just to paint the big picture, what the, let's say, perfect landscape might look like, but as said, uh, depending on the requirements, uh, some some customers of ours are, are fully okay with, for example, the hybrid cloud for customer only. And then uh, an SAP slide. Uh, so what is the big picture from SAP? I'm not going through the whole slide, but simply putting the service side to a context here. 
So we have, uh, we have the commerce solutions, we have the revenue solutions, meaning more like operative uh, ERP solutions, we have marketing, we have service, we have sales. And uh, out of these solutions, now the cloud for customer that's in the focus of this session is actually supporting the, the sales, service, and uh, also to some extent the marketing, basic marketing uh, functionalities. And then uh, the promised one slider on the engagement center. So we will not uh, have the time to deep dive into a demo of that. But as said, that's the new product from SAP. And where that is coming from is the fact that uh, the way it is positioned is that it's, uh, let's say, more towards B2C customer service scenarios. And it's a quick user interface uh, to handle a high volume of customer service interactions. And it is always associated and integrated with the SAP contact center. And all these things you see here are, are uh, cloud-based solutions. So there are no on-premise on solutions in, in this slide. And then comparing the engagement center to the cloud for customer and the cloud for service, uh, the Cloud for Service is then, it supports both B2C and B2B scenarios, but it's more of a, let's say, uh, moderate to low volume, but more complex cases. So where you need to have uh, different kinds of routing logics and you need to be able to push back and forth the different service tickets and so forth. So there's more robust uh, functionality behind the Cloud for Service. And uh, with that, I will hand over to Riku, who will actually then explain on the demo scenarios that you will be seeing. Yes, thank you, Joel. So uh, just a brief presentation still of myself. Uh, my name is Rikar Kallis. Um, I've been working for uh, Bilot for approximately one and a half year. And uh, basically all that time I've been doing CRM systems and especially inside the CRM segment, uh, concentrating on the customer service part. So uh, what I'm about to show you um, today, just kind of a highlight, uh, um, highlight of, of the agenda, is that uh, we start with just a brief pre uh, presentation of the Cloud for Customer product. Uh, from that, we will drill down uh, to more service-specific uh, specific features. And at the end, I will uh, show then a kind of omni-channel demo. So talk a little bit what is omni-channel and how does it kind of look from a practical point of view. And uh, here I'm planning, if you have enough time, to, to show you three scenarios where we have kind of first a phone call, uh, which will, get, um, which will uh, trigger a ticket. Uh, we have an email um, a scenario where the customer contacts us per email. And then we uh, will go to social media and see how a Twitter post can be converted into a ticket. So uh, let me jump directly into the system. Um, and as I said, uh, the product name is uh, SAP Hybris Cloud for Customer. And it's SAP's uh, CRM system and it uh, totally works in the cloud. So this is hosted uh, in, in Germany currently and accessible kind of uh, over internet. So let me just log in and let's log in in English. And as uh, you already said, uh, the system covers basically the sales functionalities. Uh, it covers uh, customer uh, service uh, scenarios, also including field service. Uh, we have uh, tools to, uh, for social engagement. And then we have basic the functions for the marketing part also. Um, kind of uh, the, the best or, or good features uh, that with the system is kind of really out of the box mobility. Uh, what you basically see here, you already have available out of the box in, in, on multiple different devices, for example, tablets and, and phones. Uh, the, you can integrate the system. It uh, comes already with a, uh, a lot of 
ready-made interfaces that can be utilized. For example, uh, um, to, to connect it to ERP, but, but also on multiple other features or uh, systems. And then um, also uh, a great feature is, is the analytics part in the system. So you have real-time analytics, with, which basically means that y when you are doing something in the system, all the analytics part will be updated in real time. So for example, now when I logged into the system, uh, we see kind of this home view here, the home page, which basically is a collection of uh, KPIs and reports and information that is relevant to this user. So, uh, um, and this as it now is a customer uh, service representative demo uh, user we have here, then we have some collection of, of um, of uh, service-related KPIs here. Uh, but the, with real-time analytics, the thing is that when, if we do something, we get, for example, a ticket is escalated to me, then instantly it will can kind of show here on the, on the reports also. Um, so let's go in, into the, then close the home or the opening page there and go to the uh, actual system. So, um, as said, um, depending on the system is kind of role based. So depending on what kind of role you are giving, um, which cor corresponds to what kind of features you should be able to handle, you can see different things. So, for example, for demo purposes here, you can see that this um, this user has access also to sales and customers and so forth. Even though we are kind of the service is the main part we're focusing today on. Um, we have some quick create buttons here, which basically uh, where we can access uh, different functions in the system in a, uh, in a quick manner, no matter where in the system we currently are. Um, as said, it's mainly a CRM system, so for just basically quick show, we can say that we've under sales here, we have the uh, we have, for example, the sales document that that um, the sales process is commonly used in, like leads, opportunities, sales quotes, sales orders, and so forth. Um, but let's go into the actual service uh, uh, work center here to to see what we uh, to to focus on that one. So basically, this is kind of the main view for, for the, what the agents would see. So basically, the queue. And this holds uh, or lists kind of tickets available in the system depending on, on, on some, some uh, filters. So basically, when showing my queue as a default, I will, I'm logged in as this agent called uh, Lisa Nieminen. So uh, I will see tickets that belongs to me. And um, this view, views are uh, a great feature also about the, the, the system is that these views are uh, easy to modify. So this is something that just comes out of the box like this. Uh, but let's say, for example, I would get, want to get rid of a, a, a column here or a field. I can easily remove it. And also, if I want to add something, bring, bring in something new here. Um, the, the system basically supports the basic uh, uh, ticketing features, like, uh, of course, you have tickets. You have a, for a ticket has a priority, it has a status. Of course, you have the customer on the ticket. And here, we, uh, and it's assigned to organizations, to a agents. You have service levels, basically telling you how much time you, so you can monitor how much time you, you have to, to give a resolution to the ticket, for example. And then as, as we have a kind of dig digitalized customer service in the focus today, of course, we're gonna, which is basically like, uh, the, the beef of the, the demo will be different channels. So here you can see that, uh, that Lisa is currently seeing uh, different channels in the same view here. So we have a couple, the two first lines here are email queues, or uh, uh, sorry, tickets that are created uh, via the email channel. 
Then we have uh, internet channel, which basically means that we have been using interfaces for that. So in practice, it would be, for example, a web form. Um, a ticket created uh, via web form. Um, here we have uh, tickets that are created uh, via Twitter, uh, telephony, manual, and so forth. <coughs> Sorry. So um, let's actually then jump into the to the, the first scenario here, and we will actually um, take a look on on. Uh, receiving uh, or creating a new ticket uh, via a telephonic, uh, telephone call. And as said, uh, as such, as this is a kind of CRM system, uh, we don't, uh, it doesn't have our own telephony system. So you need to integrate it with, with uh, one. Um, we have a, this a live activity pane here that you can, uh, which provides the, uh, the ability to then integrate it with a, a telephone system. So, so you can uh, reuse the information there then to this system, as we will see in just a minute. This live activity pane can also, it doesn't only serve uh, phone calls, it also can serve, for example, chats. So you can actually have a chat window here, which then from where you can then trigger a ticket if, if you have an integrated chat client. Uh, but today we will uh, now look at kind of the phone call, a phone call coming through this. So um, the phone system I, I have uh, here working is, is SAP con uh, SAP's contact center, which is then uh, holds kind of where you can handle, for example, different phone queues. You have IVR there. You have different. You can have routing rules based on skills, and it, well, it's the phone system uh, with with all its need, needs fe feature features. Yeah. So let me show you a kind of simple example here. Uh, I will actually log in to uh, a queue, uh, and I will put me as a ready, which basically then um, uh, sets that I'm ready to to accept phone calls. And now I need a partner in crime, so Patrick can uh, give me a call here. Okay, I will start to make a phone call. And we can see it's kind of an incoming phone call here, and I can actually answer it, the phone call. Uh, we won't now have any audio or something like that, but you, you can get the, the picture what what is happening. And of course, uh, I could hear then um, we would kind of talk through what the what the thing is, and I will I will actually already close this call. How we hang hang up the call because the interesting thing that we are kind of interested in is actually happening here in the live activity pane. So uh, when the customer now called in, what happened is that uh, while uh, integration uh, we caught the kind of um, the, the caller's telephone number, and now this telephone number matches matches a customer in our customer database, and it actually pulls up uh, automatically for me the customer information here. Um, I can see also that the uh, the uh, customer has some um, previous tickets here, and um, I can utilize that information also. If the customer uh, would not have been recognized, I could create new contact for for uh, this incoming number. But now as we have the case uh, that we have ident identified the uh, customer, I, we let's say it was kind of a password reset phone call, for example. I will, uh, I can enter some details here and I can directly create a new ticket out of uh, out of this uh, this call. So pressing the new ticket button will then open the actual kind of ticket. And as you can see, we, it will actually pull the, the customer information uh, already here into the ticket. It will also here add uh, 
uh, the, the comments basically that I just typed in there on the on the right hand side. Um, and um, what we um, and this is basically now also how the ticket looks. You can actually close down the live activity paint. You will see it a little bit bigger this way. So this is now kind of how the ticket looks. So just a few quick words on 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 what we are seeing here. So in the gray area, gray area here on the top, um, you have uh, the header information of the ticket. So basically, like subject and status, priority, team, and who, who which agent it's assigned to. Here on the right hand side in the header, we also have uh, the SLA's date time or, or dates, so telling us that when when is this um, resolution due here. Um, we we then have some tabs with different information here, um, and on for example now on this overview tab. Uh, we have the information here, here's all the fields, and it's uh, divided into sections. So for example, already as, as I mentioned, we have the customer section here. We have a section for interactions, uh, category, product, um, and so forth. And as I already mentioned on, on the previous kind of view is that here, uh, how easy it's to modify. So that also applies to here. Um, we can uh, we can easily kind of add fields, remove fields, and even make kind of the layout uh, differ the layout based on on different user or different scenarios. So some scenarios requires a low amount of fields. Some other more complex ones you have would need to fill out more fields. All right, um, and. We also have some already some ready-made kind of neat features, like for example, well, you could integrate a knowledge base here to help the agents in in searching similar tickets, uh, which basically easily can list if I search the existing tickets. It's it already finds the kind of uh, now in this case tickets with the password word included. Might be useful sometimes. And then on the bottom we have some some quick access um, uh, buttons. Uh, for example, assigning the ticket to on and uh, creating follow-up documents, uh, follow-up ticket, or or maybe I create a lead out of this. So basically integrating the sales part also neatly in, into this one. All right, um, I will close this down and uh, show you. Uh, another example, so we created one ticket uh, based on a, on a phone call. Uh, let's create one via email. So I will type in an email address, which basic, basically is, is the corporate support uh, um, email for a pilot. So we just type a mail that... Um, for example, something like this, and send it away. Um, what basically happens now in the system is that when the email uh, comes in, so if we identify the the user that has sent the email, it will create a, automatically create a ticket out of it. Uh, if it doesn't do it, uh, we have different options how it how it should. Uh, Manage. We can either create a uh, user directly, or then we can have a more manual process where an agent goes and validates the uh, the content of the ticket and then assigns a customer to it. But in this case, we um, we should uh, the user should be identified, and it is, and and we will see that as I send it from my own email, we get pilot uh, uh, co as a company here. On, on the ticket. So um, opening it up, I want to, to show you a, a, a one feature still that is worth mentioning on, on, on the ticket part. Um, now when this is kind of uh, 
uh, here by email, it might be the case that we would also like to reply uh, via email. So uh, I directly also have the option here to reply, and we have email. So I would just kind of click reply, and we have this uh, inbuilt e uh, uh, email client here. So I can, as a service representative, respond here that, um, sure, I will send a tech, for example, like this, and then send, and it will uh, send send the email, and it will also have this kind of identifier in the in the ticket uh, subject, which basically means that when the customer is re then replying to the email, um, it will come directly into this ticket, so you don't need to handle handle that email then again. Okay, um, and as said. Um, we also have kind of the fields, field service uh, uh, functionalities here. So in this case, it will kind of uh, need to, to, to go into those. But um, that will be a, a case for a, for a other demo. But uh, this process would continue so that you can send an on-site technician and he can interact with the same ticket here. So that was kind of the quick scenario two, which we sent an email. And then we will still, I promised you a third one, and we let's take Twitter as a social media case here. So I actually have my Twitter uh, up here in, in a different window. So um, let me send a tweet here. And I will send it directly here to, to this uh, Asiakas Demo uh, Twitter account. And um, Twitter account here from from my own. So basically now I'm I'm here the end customer and and this is representing kind of the 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 company's uh, Twitter account. Um, so what will then happen going back to to um, <coughs> to, to Cloud for Customer is that um, when it will ha we will have a kind of background job here, uh, going uh, looking out for new tweets in this case, and um, it will actually uh, recognize that okay, there's a new tweet here, and it will turn that into a ticket. So, uh, as you can see, the channel here is is Twitter, and um, when I open it up, you can see that okay, it's me who's basically tweeting here. I get the I love your products kind of message here. And uh, from here, basically, the scenario will continue as the same. So uh, as a, again, as the service representative, I can reply here that thank you, for example. Uh, and this is basically the same way that I previously showed you when showing the email channel. So uh, it will collect the log here. And if I go back to my Twitter account here, you will see that then this um, uh, company company Twitter account is, has basically replied uh, to me that this is okay, or thank you in this case. Okay, so um, this will actually to to basically summarize what I when I just kind of showed you is that um, I showed you kind of three scenarios. We had one, the phone call, uh, the email, and then the Twitter. So uh, if you think of the kind of server the representative point of view, uh, they, uh, they actually use now the same e kind of views here, the same interface, and the kind of functions, how they, the process, how they, they manage tickets is the same in all these three cases. But then again, if you think of the customer point of view, they're kind of totally different. So uh, the first user was using kind of traditional phone, second one is typing an email, and the, the third one is, is uh, tweeting. So this is kind of one, one, um, one way how you can handle kind of the omni-channel aspect. So uh, 
the user can kind of choose their own path how they how they go or what channel they prefer. But then for the for the uh, customer uh, or service representative, it kind of it's still the same, and they can work here in the same use in the same system. And this way, we are also kind of ready for for what tomorrow brings us due to the fact that we can easily drop out a channel, we can bring in new channels, and actually the service representative can work in the same way uh, also tomorrow. Yes, I think I, I will stop here. Um, thank you for, for uh, giving me time to show this, and I will be happy then to kind of do more uh, targeted presentations if, if needed. Could I have a mouse here, please? Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, thank you, Ricard, for the demo. Uh, my name is Petri Niemela, and I'm a CRM consultant here in Bilot. I've been working in Bilot for four years now, and I've been quite tightly involved with this Cloud for Customer pro uh, product since it's been on the market here in, um, here in Nordic countries. So that is a bit more than three years now. And what I would like to show you is basically like a, um, a checklist on how to actually approach uh, implementation of, of such a cloud system. Um, so let's, let's move forward. And I'm just going to highlight some key key topics here. Um, in the first first phase, I would like to highlight um, that you need to really engage your whole organization in the implementation project. So you want to have aspects from from coming from the end users. You want to have managers. You want to have directors, so that it's clear that what is what is really expected from the um, from the cloud product. And it can be generally thought that, for example, customer service managers um, know what the daily work of a customer service agent um, keeps inside. But you should actually challenge this thought. And it's not a bad idea even if you would actually go and stand behind a customer service agent and inspect that how, how do they do their job, are there some different ways of working um, between different teams, because there will be, or, or there, there really can be um, topics that will have an impact on the, on the project. And another thing I would like to point out is, if you have the possibility, then consider um, implementing the rollout of the project in different phases. So, for example, in the first phase, we built the functionalities to support um, one customer service channel, and that could, could be, for example, email channel. And then in, in future phases, we could take more channels into use, because this way you will learn valuable lessons in each of these goal-eyes, and you will have time to adapt and change the system accordingly. Um, design. Here, you should challenge your operation model, so challenge your processes, challenge how you work currently, and consider if there could be something also that you can fine tune and change in your processes to make, make them more efficient. So not only concentrate on changing the system, but also change perhaps the ways, ways how you work currently in your customer service organization. And as a system supplier, it's also our task to challenge your ways of working and, and provide insight then we also need a strong core team for the implementation. So we want to have different um, area experts involved. So for example, one, one person from, from master data, one person from customer service processes, and then also a person who would handle all the analytics, building of reports, and so forth, because there, there will be um, different tasks, and that's 
just too much to handle, for example, for just one one system super user. And the actual development um, start integrations as soon as possible, because there probably or there usually usually is at least some surprises involved in the integration development. And also, what we really try to emphasize is um, with these cloud projects is that work together with, like if we are the supplier, we want to really, really work tightly with your core team. And this is because we can really set um, a cloud system up in a short amount of period and we can configure it so that we can actually produce demoable content in just um, let's say we could split the work into different um, sprints taking for example one week and then provide you some demoable content and this way we can actually see from the system itself that how does it currently look like and then we can work with the core team together to configure the system um, how we want it to be and this also transfers knowledge from us to you because you will need some basic administration knowledge even after the go live for example so that you can you can do small modifications you can add new fields into the system you can build reports by yourself so you're not so dependent on on the supplier and one one thing also is um, regarding customer service system is is the bottlenecks of the system itself so it needs to be efficient for the customer service agent um, to perform the daily tasks and there also needs to be enough performance in the system so if your volumes of of contacts is, is high then and if you if you are worried about a cloud service performance then we suggest that you actually do performance testing in the system itself and then UAT um, divide into multiple different sessions define a specific scope for each session and this way maybe it's better to have actually some organized organized testing for the project and then roll out in different phases if that is possible uh, possible because you you will learn valuable lessons from each each of these different rollouts and um, that's basically it um, I hope these well these topics are a bit straightforward and maybe basic topics but still these are the topics that we face we face in the projects and where where issues actually arise and I think that actually concludes our presentations and now we have time for yeah I think uh, I think Marius and Radek will do a quick uh, summary in Polish I hope and uh, thank you thank you everyone for the opportunity to speak with you and uh, we, we are open for questions here Marius and Radek please go ahead <laughs>